Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on polyuria. Polyuria means passing of a large volume of urine within a defined period of time. It is defined as urine output exceeding 3 liters per day in adults and 2 liters per meter square in children. The common associated conditions are diabetes mellitus, diabetes insipidus, excess intravenous fluids, osmotic mannitol infusion, radio contrast media, high protein tube feeds. Drugs like diuretics and lithium, caffeine, and post-obstructive diuresis. Some other less common conditions that can cause polyuria are hypokalemia, hypercalcemia, psychogenic polydipsia, excess intravenous fluids, Cushing syndrome, primary hyperaldosteronism, or inability to concentrate urine, in sickle cell trait or disease, chronic pyelonephritis, and amyloidosis. Polyuria usually develops via two basic mechanisms, osmotic load, and excretion of free water. In some conditions, there is a high osmotic load of the serum being filtered through the kidney, due to the excretion of non-absorbable solutes, such as glucose. This leads to an osmotic diuresis. In addition, the concentration gradient in the proximal tubules is altered, affecting sodium reabsorption and urine concentration. Another mechanism is the excretion of free water. This is usually due to abnormalities in vasopressin production, or in response to vasopressin, plus an inability to concentrate urine. Let's look at the causes of polyuria and their pathophysiology behind. In diabetes mellitus, polyuria in diabetes mellitus is due to osmotic diuresis from excretion of excess glucose. The high levels of glucose present exceed the kidney's ability for reabsorption and it is lost in the urine. Water is drawn out by osmosis in the tubule of the kidney. Polyuria in this setting indicates symptomatic hyperglycemia, whereas in diabetes insipidus, it can be categorized as either central or peripheral. Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus can also be further classified as either congenital or acquired. In central type, it can be idiopathic or secondary to any disorder that leads to damage to the vasopressin secreting neurons in the posterior pituitary. There is inadequate excretion of ADH from the pituitary, causing inadequate activation of the V2 receptors and aquaporins. So water is not reabsorbed and is lost in urine, causing polyuria. Whereas for nephrogenic type, it can be further classified into congenital or acquired. In congenital type, there is mutation of V2 receptor on distal tubule of the kidney. V2 receptor is not responsive to ADH stimulation. So there is failed activation of aquaporin channels. So water is not appropriately retained then lost in urine. Another abnormality is the mutation of aquaporin water channel. Mutation of aquaporin water channel does not allow for adequate reuptake of water when the V2 receptor is stimulated by ADH. Hence, the water is excreted in urine. Next, we will look at the acquired type of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. It can be due to hypokalemia or hypercalcemia. In both cases, there is decreased expression of aquaporin 2 channels. This decreases the water uptake and therefore increased diuresis. Another cause is post-obstructive diuresis. This is seen in bilateral urinary tract obstruction. Natriuretic factors such as ANP, which are normally lost in the urine, are retained during the obstructive phase, and therefore still exert their effect after the obstruction is relieved. ANP has several actions that facilitate diuresis, including blocking the release of renin at the macula densa, blocking the effects of angiotensin II, and affecting sodium reabsorption and aldosterone release. Urinary tract obstruction has also been shown to directly damage tubular function of the kidney, and alter the expression of transporter proteins required for the normal handling of solutes and electrolytes. The net result is failure of the countercurrent multiplier mechanism of the kidney, failure of sodium reabsorption, and ultimately, ineffective urinary dilution and concentration. All of these processes contribute to salt and water wasting, resulting in a post-obstructive diuresis. This is the flowchart showing the previous explanation. There is bilateral uretic obstruction, which causes retention of ANP, increased urea diuretic action, impairment of cellular transporters, depressed expression of transport proteins, and direct tubule dysfunction. These mechanisms reduce sodium and other solutes reabsorption. Then there is failure of the countercurrent multiplier mechanism in the kidney. The kidney is unable to concentrate and dilute urine appropriately, hence causing natriuresis and diuresis. Lastly, lithium can also cause polyuria. In lithium poisoning, there is impairment of the stimulatory effect of ADH on adenylate cyclase, which when present, normally leads to the production of water channels in the cortical collecting duct. 
Other proposed mechanisms include partial inhibition of aldosterone's capacity to increase ENAC expression and salt reabsorption. As a consequence, salt is lost in the urine and water follows it out. Other than that, lithium also potentially inhibits sodium reabsorption in the cortical collecting channel. Decreased sodium reabsorption leads to salt wasting and water follows sodium out in the urine, thus causing polyuria. That's all for this video. Thank you.